Google just announced an absolutely mind-blowing text-to-video AI. Hello my friends, how are you doing? I guess we can all remember how we were super impressed by text-to-video with stable diffusion. We have a project from Facebook Meta which is really amazing and creates realistic videos and Google maybe even one-ups it, especially when you look at these time consistency in the video. So when we look up here on this drone that is flying through these snow covered palm trees, you can see that image to image, the AI creates a consistency that makes it look like an actual video and makes it look like an actual space. Also, when we look at the shark, which is swimming through the water, you can see that the light that is falling onto the shark, the movement of the shark, all of that is very smooth and consistent. There is no flickering in color, shape or brightness. So that is pretty amazing. Also, when we look at the bursting balloon, you can see how beautiful this is rendering the light effects, the movement of the liquid, also the bursting of the balloon rubber and how these parts of the balloon stay together while they float away in slow motion. Some other elements that are really interesting is this hand grabbing the cup of tea or coffee, which is rather good for a hand compared to what stable diffusion and mid journey can do. And also I'm very impressed how this AI can create not just readable text, but correctly written and animated text at the same time. That is pretty impressive. Now let's look a little bit into the process. They have written an abstract here. You can download the research paper. I will link this page below the video. And down here we can see the actual steps of the process, which is really interesting because it says cascaded diffusion models, spatial super resolution, temporal super resolution. So what does it mean? How does that work? You can see here we have a text input. This is where everything starts. Then the AI is creating a low resolution, low frame rate video. So when we look here at the base, it says it has 16 frames only, a resolution of 24 by 48 and three frames per second. So a very low resolution at the second step, we see TSR, which means temporal super resolution. This is doubling the amount of frames and doubling the frame rate. Now, this is not just coping the frames over. It is trying to figure out the steps in between these two images we had before so that we get a smooth animation. In the next step, we see SSR. This is upscaling. So we see we have the same amount of frames, the same frames per second, but we have now a higher resolution. The resolution is increased again in the next step. Then in the next step, the frame rate and the amount of frames is doubled. And in the next step, the amount of frames and frame rate is doubled again. In the final step, there is another upscaling happening. So we end up, and this is very mind blowing, at 1280 by 768 pixels. We basically have a high resolution video with 24 frames, which is classic movie standard. This leaves us with a 5.3 second long video, which is pretty amazing. Now, another interesting thing on this page is that Google is speaking about the limitations. And this is where I'm happy they do it, but I also am a little bit concerned that they are doing it because what they say is they want this, of course, to be used positively to impact society and amplifying and augmenting human creativity. And of course, they want to have this not misused to generate fake videos, hateful, explicit or harmful content. This is absolutely understandable. But here's the thing. In the next sentence, they say they have taken multiple steps to minimize these concerns by applying input text prompt filtering and output video content filtering so that in the end, much of the explicit and violent content can be filtered out both in the input and in the output and on the one side. I'm really happy they are having these concerns and they are trying to prevent abuses of these new technologies. But on the other hand, as we see with Midjourney, this can lead to a lot of censorship and inhibition in many cases where the output wouldn't be harmful, but rather creative or artistic. Now, my worry here is when you think about classic software like Adobe Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve for video cutting, 
You can create hateful and abusive content with that, but the companies wouldn't guide you in the way what you can do with the software. They wouldn't look at the videos. But now that we have AI, the problematic is that we can include this kind of automated filtering in any kind of software. So there is a reasonable point to be made that maybe Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve or any kind of other software would just keep you from creating content because it says, oh, wait, this is a violent scene. Oh, there is nudity and you can't do that, even though it might be, for example, a scene for Game of Thrones where we have plenty of nudity and violence. So what if the software says, ah, you can't do that. You first have to ask someone for the support team to unlock this function so you can create this Game of Thrones scenes. That's a little bit strange, right? My question would be, who should decide about what is allowed and what should be filtered out? Should that really be a multi-billion dollar company? Also, they are writing about the social bias and stereotypes that are created with these images. If you write something, you have probably also noticed this in the creations of Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion and any other image AI because they are trained by millions of pictures and there is a bias already in the pictures of, for example, how many people from different ethnicities are represented in different positions things like that. So this is a systemic problem in the amount of information that can be used to train the AI and has to be tackled in a way that we try to remove that from the AI, make the AI more neutral, so not to take on the biases and stereotypes that exist already in our different societies, in our different histories. So let me know what you think in the comments and see you tomorrow in my live stream. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.